Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Thank you because you are our Heavenly Father. And I pray, I ask that you will anoint my tongue as the pen of a ready writer. Grant me utterance to be able to explain the revelation of your word today. Anoint the ears of my audience let them receive deeper interpretation of this word beyond what i will communicate let the holy spirit take over in jesus name amen you are welcome in the name that is above every other name i want to welcome you to today's teaching and i want to know where you are watching me from all over the world. This is an apostolic global Bible study and uh, I am on a mission of 30 days prophetic apostolic teaching of different subjects. Let me know where you are watching me from so that I will know the, the coverage of our impact in the teaching ministry. You are welcome. All right. Um, if you follow me very well, I said I'll be doing a teaching today on understanding the realm of the Spirit. Understanding the realm of the Spirit. That is my subject today. And I'll be teaching, uh, I'll be teaching you on this very important subject god has given me utterance and uh, access to this teaching by revelation 
and I want to teach uh, the body of Christ this subject biblically. Biblically. Praise the Lord. So the first thing is when you hear the word, the realm of the spirit, what is the spirit realm? That is where we are going to start from. But we cannot answer that question until we look into scripture to find an answer to our definition. In Hebrew 11, chapter 11 from verse 1 to 3, please, I want to find out if the background music is not in conflict with my voice. I just want to be so sure. I want to be sure. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to be sure of that if Hallelujah. Okay. Um, Hebrew chapter 11 from verse 1. Now faith is the substance of the things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Verse 3 says, Through faith we understand that the words, W-O-R-L-D-S, were framed by the word of God. Alright? Verse 3 again, through faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. Through faith we understand that the words... Plural, the words were framed by the word of God so that things which were seen, which are seen, were not made of the things which do appear. If you are going to teach on the revelation of the spirit realm, you must lay a strong emphasis on Hebrew 11 verse 3. That the Bible says through faith, the words were framed by the word of God. That word, W-O-R-L-D-S, means ion in the Greek. And it means both the seen and the unseen world. So when you hear the word, what is the spirit realm? The spirit realm or spirit world. It is the realm the spirit realm is a realm where spirit forces have their existence. The realm of the spirit is the inhabitant of spirit forces. That is their permanent habitation even though they can exercise a great influence over the realm of time but the realm of the spirit it is the realm where spirit forces have their permanent existence it is the realm where spirit forces have their permanent existence either divine spirit or demonic spirit because that Hebrew we read said by faith the words were framed by the word of God and the things that appear eventually came from the unseen realm. So when you are defining the realm of the spirit, it is the realm of spirit realities and their habitation. If you are not calling it realms, you can also call it words. If you are not using spirit world, you can also use spirit realms. You are talking about the same thing. It is the realm of the unseen. Realms where spirit, diverse spirit, have their permanent existence, though they exercise a great influence over the realm of time. That is one of the definition of what we call the realm of the spirit. Secondly, I said that... Uh, the realm of the spirit 
is the realm where spirit forces have their permanent existence but they seek influence on the earth where they exercise influence is the earth but where they inhabit their permanent re residence is the spirit that is the first important thing i want you to know as regard the realm of the spirit i'm trying to simplify it i don't want to use a difficult language to interpret it and that is why for the sake of people that are writing i need somebody to help me write to highlight today's teaching is going to be a blessing to you okay so that hebrew 1 verse 3 we read said through faith the words were framed by the word of god so that the things that manifested came from the unseen dimension when God said, let there be light, when God said, let there be this, those things that did appear, they appear as a result, but they proceeded from the unseen realm. So the realm of the spirit is the realm where spirit forces have their habitation, and therefore they exercise a great influence over the earth. For example, the Bible says, whatever you bind on the earth shall be bound in the heaven, whatever you loose on the earth shall be loose in the heaven. So spirit forces have their permanent existence in the spirit realm, but they exercise influence over the earth. I think that is okay. We can move on. And uh, when we'll also talk about the realm of the spirit, it is just two, even though there are many dimensions. There are two major realms, there are, but each realm has dimensions. I want you to write it down, very important. There are two major realms, and each of the realm has dimension. One, the realm of light. Two, the realm of darkness. The realm of light and the realm of darkness. The realm of light has dimensions. The realm of darkness has dimensions. In the realm of darkness, Ephesians chapter 6 said, For we reason not against the flesh and blood, but against principality, against power, against the ruler of the darkness of the world and spiritual wickedness in high places. So what Paul mentioned by revelation explains to us that even in the realm of darkness, there are dimensions. In the realm of darkness, there are dimensions. One of the dimensions of the darkness is that in the realm of darkness, they also have princes. Just like Jesus is the prince of peace in the realm of light. They are a princes in the realm of darkness. The book of Daniel said there was a man called the prince of Persia. The prince of Persia. A prince of Persia is also an entity in the realm of darkness. So when we talk about the realm of the spirit, it is basically the realm of light and the realm of darkness. So each realm has dimension. When you refer to dimension, we are talking about different layers, different form of expression in each realm. Paul the Apostle said, whether they be throne or principalities or dominion or power, all things are created by him and for him. So you need to understand that very important, that the realm of the spirit is the realm where spirit forces have their permanent existence though they exercise influence over the realms of the earth. And I say there are only two major realms. There is a realm of darkness. There is a realm of light. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 to 13, the Bible says God has translated us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. So when a man becomes born again, he goes through translation he is translated from darkness to light from darkness to light the word darkness means courtier it means a system an authority that governs a man beyond his permission so there are two major realms each of these realms has dimensions and the dimensions of light the realm of light has dimensions the realm of darkness has dimension. In the realms of light, which is the realm of God, God is the highest figure 
in his reign. It's the highest entity in his reign. And the symbol of the dominion of God in the realm of light is the throne of God. The throne of God is the highest expression of his authority in the realm where he functions. So Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 says, Let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find help in time of need. That simply means that the throne of grace is the highest expression of dominion and the authority of God in that light. Then we also have the realm of darkness. In the realm of darkness, Satan is their God. The Bible calls him the prince of the world, the God of this world. He is the one who exercises influence over the earth. And that is why he is also the chief spirit in that realm. Now, the realm of light is called the divine realm where the will of God is done. The realm of God, which is the realm of light, it is the divine realm where the will of God is done. And the earthly realm experiences the fulfillment of his will. In Matthew chapter 6, the Bible says, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the realm of God is a realm where the will of God is done, and in the earthly realm, the realm, the earthly realm experiences the fulfillment of that will. The will of God is done in heaven, and the fulfillment of the will that is done is experienced in the earthly dimension. In the realm where God lives, it is a realm of theocracy. It is a realm where God decides what to do and he decides how to do it because it's unquestionable and nobody can question and resist his authority. So the realm of God is the realm where the will of God is done and then the experience of the fulfillment of that will passes into the earthly dimension. I hope you understand that. In the realm of light, I'm talking about the realm of God now because I don't want to speak about the realm of darkness. It's not my subject. I just want to talk about understanding the realm of the spirit, which is the realm of God. So in the realm of God, which is the realm of light, Jesus is the way. In the realm of light, Jesus is the way. In the realm of light, Jesus is the way. That simply means anyone who will have access into the realm of light must be born again. In John chapter 14 verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What that explains to you is very simple. Since the realm of the spirit is the realm where spirit forces have their permanent existence, though they seek influence over the earth, and in that realm of light, I said there are many dimensions. In the realm of darkness, there are many dimensions. And I'll be sharing with you about four dimensions in the realm of light. The angelic dimension. We are going to look at it. I'm teaching as far as Bible reveals that. I'm not teaching beyond the authority of scripture. I don't want to go into the extra spiritual activities which is not permitted within the authority of scripture. So I will be limiting my teaching to the concept of God's word. All right. Now, in the realm of light, Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. And Jesus is the life. What that explains is, one, you cannot have access to the realm of light except you are born again. Light needs access. And Jesus is the access to the realm of light. Therefore, when we talk about the realm of light, Jesus is the way. Jesus is the access to the realm of light. He is the way. He is the only way to access the realms of God. Why? Because the Bible says every other one who came in through another door, they are thieves and robbers. This is a very important statement. He is the way. So anyone who is not born again cannot access the realms of God because Christ is the only way through which we come into the realm of God. 
So if you are not born again, you cannot live, function, and reign in the realm of God. If you are not born again, you cannot function, you cannot live, you cannot reign in the realm of God. Secondly, in the realm of light, which is the realm of God, Jesus is also the truth. It's not just the way. Jesus is also the truth. And what that explains to you is very simple. The highest revelation contained in the realms of God is Christ. That is why Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 to 4 says, God who is at sundry times spoken to our Father in diverse manner, at in this last day spoken to us through his Son, who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person. So nobody has access to the realm of God without Christ. And then Jesus is also the truth in the realm of God. The highest revelation contained in the realms of God is Christ. That is why when you begin to listen and you read the Bible, you will find out in the book of Revelation, the worship of the angel focuses on Christ. The worship of the angels focuses on Christ. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power, for thou art created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So angels, their highest revelation contained in the realms of God is Christ. That is why our psalmist in this end time must give us song that has to do with Christ, has to do with the incarnation of Christ, the ministry of Christ, the death of Christ, the resurrection of Christ, and now the ministry of Jesus in the heavenly places, which is the high priest, after the order of Melchizedek. Anyone whose song does not contain the revelation of Christ is not singing in the highest dimension. The highest revelation contained in the realms of God is Christ. So the scripture says, in him we live, we move, and we have our being. That is to show you that Jesus is the access code to the realm of light and Jesus is the truth in the realm of light. When John saw him in Revelation chapter 1, the Bible said in verse 7, I was in the spirit on the last day and I had a voice that sounds like a trumpet and it said unto me, and when I look back to see the trumpet that sounded, I saw a, a son of man in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks whose head is like white like wool, and his eyes like a blazing fire, and there come out of his mouth two edged sword, and his feet was like a polished bronze. And when he speaks, his voice sounds like the voice of many waters. And when I saw this, I fell at his feet like a dead man, and he stretched forth his right hand, and he touched me, and he said, Fear not, I am the one who was, who is, and who is to come. So the highest revelation of God in the realms of God is contained, the highest revelation contained in the realms of God is Christ. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, Blessed be the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. So the heavenly realms functions in Christ. When Christ is no more, heavenly realms will vanish. Why? Because Christ is the substance of that realm. Christ is the substance of that realm. The reality of the realm of God is Christ. That is why without Christ, there is no heaven. Why? Because everything about heaven, it is predicated on Christ. So if the Holy Spirit wants to show you one of the greatest revelations, it is the revelation of God that is contained in Christ. The truth about God can only be revealed in Christ. God lives in three places. God lives in the heaven of heavens, according to Bible. God lives in Christ, Ephesians 1 verse 3. God lives in my reborn spirit. The Bible says my body is the temple of the Lord. That simply means my body is the temple of my spirit. Why my spirit is the temple of the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost lives in my spirit. My spirit lives in my body. And once your body, your spirit lives in your body, and then the temple of the Holy Ghost is your spirit, why the temple of your spirit is your body? You have to understand this very important statement. So God lives in three realms. He lives in the heaven of heavens. That is Revelation chapter 4 verse 1. 
God also lives in Christ. That is Ephesians uh, chapter 1 verse 3. And then God also lives in my spirit. That is why he said it is expedient for me to go. If I don't go, the comforter will not come. And when comforter comes, he will abide with you and live with you forever. He will be living inside of us. So you understand that Jesus is the way, access to the realms of God. Jesus is the truth. The highest revelation contained in the realms of God is Christ. If you have never come to have encounter with Christ and your revelation is not unveiling Christ, you have not come to the highest revelations in the realms of God. This is a very important. So God lives in my reborn spirit. Now, the reality of God is expressed in Christ. And Christ is the way. Christ is the way. Jesus is the way. Which way? Having access into the realms of God. Jesus is the truth. The highest revelations in the realms of God is contained in Christ. Then Jesus is the life. Jesus is the life. Now listen to what I want to say very important. He is the life. There is life in the realms of God. Everything that lives in the realm of God has life and they reflect life. Celestial creation has life. Angel has life. 24 elder has life. The archangel has life. The cherubim, the seraphim, all, di all dimensions of angel and every creation that lives in the realms of God, they have life. They reflect life. Everything expresses life. So Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Every truth you want to know about the realm of the Spirit is in Christ. Every truth you want to know about the things of God is in Christ. So Jesus Christ is life. In fact, John 6, 63 says, It is the Spirit that quickens, the flesh profit nothing. The word I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. The life that is manifested through the Spirit we always produce tangible results. It will produce definite experiences. That is the essence of that life. So through the life, they relate with God. Everything in heaven relates with God through the life. And everything in the realm of God understands the will of God through the life. So the realm of God is an active realm of light. And light is revelation and illumination. This is a very important thing. When you hear the word of God, and that word you hear contains light, the word of God you hear is immortalized in your spirit. This is one of the reasons why we have conviction, persuasion, and change. You cannot change until the word of God that is preached contains light. When the word of God that is preached contains light, then the light is immortalized. Through the light of the word of God, the Holy Ghost immortalizes that truth in your spirit that causes a transformation. So therefore, the realm of the spirit is defined as the habitation of spirit forces. It is their habitation. It is their habitation. That is their permanent place of existence. Even though the spirit forces can travel out of the realm to exercise influence over human beings and other creation. But the truth you must understand today is very, very basic. What is the truth? The truth simply means the realm of the spirit. It is the realm where spirit forces have their permanent existence. So I am not teaching today on the realm of darkness. That is not my subject. I want to focus on the realms of God. This is very important. I want to show you second scripture. I've read the first scripture. The second scripture that I want to read is in Matthew chapter 17. It's going to help you because I'll begin to talk about the ascending and the descending realm of the Spirit. In the Matthew 17, we read uh, verse 1. Matthew 17, verse 1. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John into mountain, uh, and bringing them up into a high mountain apart. And look at verse 2. And was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses, Elias, talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. Why he yet spake? Behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. 
And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. You must understand the difference between transformation and transfiguration. A transformation, it is a change in your mindset. But a transfiguration is a change of form or appearance. So what happened here was not transformation, it was transfiguration. Jesus had to change his appearance. This is explaining to us that the realm of God has both an ascending realm and a descending realm. In this case, it was a descending realm. The realm of God invaded the mountain. And then the realm of God revealed Elijah. The realm of God revealed Moses. The realm of God revealed glorified Jesus, even though he has not died there. And everybody was on the mountain, and the mountain becomes the realms of God. When that takes place, it is called invasion. That is, the realm of God came down to invade the earth. But if you check Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, And I had a voice that sounded like a trumpet, which said unto me, Come up hither, and I will show you things that must be hereafter. That is, the realms of God is an ascending realm. That simply means you ascend to meet God. Or God descend to meet you. In the time of Adam, God came down. Now, the time of, uh, uh, of John, John went up. Paul the Apostle said in the book of Galatians, I went up by revelation. So, when D Jacob saw the ladder, and he saw heaven open, and he saw angels ascending and descending in the ladder, the Bible says when he wake up, he says, so God, what God is here, but I never knew. That is explaining to us the fulfillment of that revelation was given to Christ in the book of John chapter 2. When Nathanael said unto him that uh, when he saw Nathanael, he said, Nathanael in whom there is no God. And Nathanael said, so you know me. He said, I saw you when you were under the tree. But don't, don't bother, don't worry. You will see greater things. You will see angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. That simply means since Jesus has come, the activities of the angels has increased, both in descending and the ascending form. When angels descend, they bring an answer. When they ascend, they take your worship to God. And when they descend, they bring the glory of God. You understand that? When God inhales worship, he exhales glory. So glory is always the response of the acceptable worship. You need to get that, uh, that, that truth very clear. Alright, so this scripture explains to us that the glory of God invaded the mountain. The realm of God came down and then there was an appearance of Moses and Elijah on the mountain. The same thing happens to you when you sleep on your bed. The realm of God can appear on your, in your room and the room can become like a heaven. I don't know how many of you have seen these things before. When you sleep, where you hang your shirt and there is no light and then you wake up suddenly and the side of the hanger looked like a horse. It produces an image. That same thing is the same realm of God. When the realm of God invades a room, the reality of heaven comes into your room. So everything you see in your room like a chair and dining table will disappear because it is a descending realm. When the realm of God invades an environment, that realm imposes the reality of God in that place. A demon can be in your room to bring a demonic realm into your room. You can sleep on your bed and you can see that your bed becomes a horse that is carrying you around. That is the realm of darkness. So when we talk about the realm of God, it is both ascending and descending in operation. When it descends, it's an invasion. When it ascends, it's an invitation. So you need to understand this very important. Okay? Uh, if you understand that, say uh, a louder amen. If you are still following me, say amen. Now, go back to our teaching. Let's go back to our teaching. The realm of light is the divine realm where the will of God is done. And the 
at the realm experiences the fulfillment of his will. It's very, 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 very important. Okay, let's 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 go ahead again, and then I think uh, it is going to really help. The reason why your spirit, there is a reason why your spirit relates with the spirit realm. Why? Because your spirit man relates with the spirit realm. That is the way God made your spirit. God made, God created your spirit to relate with the spirit realm. Why must it relate with the spirit realm? When your spirit relates with the spirit realm, that is the process through which you can download the reality of God. So I wrote something here. This is the reason your spirit relates with the spirit realm because the habitation of your spirit man is also the spirit realm. Even though you are a spirit, the habitation of your spirit is in the spirit realm. Your spirit man has his environment in the spirit realm. So every time you do spiritual things, you relate with the realm of the spirit, where God is, where God functions, where God is. So your spirit man relates with the spirit realm. The light of God always helps your spirit to function in the spirit realm without complication. People don't understand that without the Holy Ghost, our spirit will get lost in the realm of the spirit. It is the Holy Ghost that helps our spirit to navigate the realm of the spirit. Because the realm of the spirit is very complex. It's a complex realm. But the Holy Spirit has been given so that he will be our guide. He will be our navigator. That is why Jesus said to his disciples, he said, it is expedient for me to go. If I don't go, the comforter will not come. And he will guide you into all truth. So what the Holy Ghost does is that He guides us into all truth. If He does not guide you into truth, then your spirit will lost in deception. Your spirit will lost in error. Your spirit will lost in lies. That is why if anyone is not walking in the spirit, his spirit cannot secure the truth of God. Many people are occupied with spirit of lies and deception because the Holy Spirit has not been permitted to guide them into truth. So, the reason why your spirit does not suffer setback and that will not have spiritual complication is because the Holy Ghost will always teach your spirit to go in the right way. Now, the second important aspect of this teaching is very important. The second thing I have defined the realm of the spirit and all what it entails. The second thing I want to explain is this. What brings you into contact with the spirit realm you what brings believers you what brings you into contact with the spirit realm as real as the realm of the spirit is there are certain things that bring you into contact with the spirit realm if you have a pen i want you to take your bible and write at this moment very important now because it is impossible to come into contact with the spirit realm except there are certain factors that can bring you into contact with the realm of the spirit. I will give you an example. Elisha was in his house, and the army of Syria has surrounded his house. And then the servant of Elisha woke up early in the morning, and he saw the army of Syria has surrounded the house. So he ran back to his master and said, Alas, master, we perish. So Elijah smiled. Elijah said, What are you talking about? He said, the band, the army of Syria has surrounded us. Elisha said, those who are with us are more than those who are with them. But Elisha asked to pray to bring that man into the contact, into the realm of the spirit, so that he can see the truth about what Elisha said. Elisha now said, O oh Lord God, open his eyes that he may see. So God honored the prayer of Elisha and brought Gehazi into contact with the spirit realm. When Gehazi came into contact with the spirit realm, he saw the chariot of fire and he saw the horses that surrounded the house of Elisha. So how did he come into contact with the spirit realm? 
he came into contact with the spirit realm by revelation. By revelation. He came into contact with the spirit realm by revelation. So I will begin to show you about nine things through which you can come into contact with the realm of God. With the realm of God. Nine things through which you can come into contact with the realm of God. Number one, you come into contact with the spirit realm through your spirit man. You come into contact with your spirit with the spirit realm through your spirit man. How do I mean? The Bible said the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts. The spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts. So what is the position of your spirit? The position of your spirit in the realm of the spirit is like a candle through which God searches the inward belly. So in the absence of a spirit man, a man has no contact with the realm of the spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 says, A natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit, neither can he receive them because they must be spiritually designed. So if you are a natural man, you cannot access. Because a natural man has a dead spirit. A dead spirit is a spirit that has no consciousness and it does not have the ability to respond to the demand of God. So therefore, the first thing through which you contact the realm of the spirit is what we call your spirit man. When God created Adam, he made him a spirit man, a soulish man, and then a body man. And then when the spirit man dies, what enters the soulish man was perversion. When a man dies spiritually, his soul is perverted and corrupted and his body is subject to attack. So through your spirit man, you come into contact with the spirit realm. No wonder John the Baptist said, John the Beloved said, we have passed from death to life. When you are born again, we pass from death to life. Salvation gave us access to the life of God. The life of God is where the activities of God is established. So your spirit man is the first thing through which you come into contact with the spirit realm. All right. Spiritual death is living without the consciousness of God. And you need to understand this truth. Very important. The second thing, what is the second thing through which you come into contact with the spirit realm? Is what we call anointing. Anointing. Anointing brings you into contact with the spirit realm. Anointing gives you a role to play in the spirit realm. When a man of God is anointed or any brother is anointed, Anointing will always give you an assignment in the realm of the spirit. So if a man is not anointed, he does not have a major role to play in the spirit. For example, if you are sleeping and then Satan wants to kill a brother and the Lord wakes you up and he says, begin to pray for Philip that he must not die and you wake up. As you begin to pray in the spirit, the anointing through which you are praying for Philip will begin to give you an active role in the realm of the spirit through which the life of Philip will be preserved. That is why some man of God sleeps. And then their member said, I saw daddy in the dream that daddy is fighting a dog. The dog wanted to bite me and the daddy just hold the mouth of the dog, twisted the mouth of the dog and the dog died. The reality is that the daddy is, that is talking about, after that time, the daddy is fast asleep. But because daddy is an anointed man, God is using the anointing upon that man to play an important role in the realm of the spirit to preserve the person. So when Elisha said unto Gehazi, Lord, open his eyes that he may see, there is an anointing upon Elisha through which he play a major role of influence in the life of Gehazi. This is very key and it's a very strong uh, revelation. So anointing will always give you an important role to play. Anointing will give you an important role to play. Anointing gives you a role to play in the spirit. If you are a minister of God called an anointed, 
you will always relate with the spirit realm through the anointing of God upon your head. Very important. Very, very important. Hallelujah. The third one is what I call faith. Faith will always bring you into contact with the spirit realm. How do I know? Hebrew chapter 11, verse 3 and verse 6. Verse 3 says, Through faith, through faith, the word, the word was framed and created by the word of God. And verse 6 says, Without faith, it is impossible to please him. He that comes to God must believe that he is and is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. What that explains to you is that every time you are operating in faith, you are relating with the realm of the spirit because faith is a substance of the things you hope for and the evidence of things you don't see. When things you don't see has evidence, the evidence of the things you don't see, it is a means through which you relate with the unseen realm. When you wake up early in the morning and you begin to declare the word of God and your faith begins to grow, your faith will begin to play a strong role in the realm of the spirit, either to alter what the enemy has issued or what the enemy has projected against you. Your faith will alter spirit of death. Your faith will alter the manipulation of darkness. Faith life is a higher life. And faith will always bring you into contact with the spirit. Look at what Jesus did to the fig tree. He expected fruit on the tree, but he could find none. And the Bible says he placed a curse upon the tree and he went his way. While they were returning the following day, the Bible says one of the disciples called Jesus. He said, Master, the fig tree whom thou cursed is already dried up. And Jesus said, have this, have this kind of faith that if you have faith, you will say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and if you do not doubt in your heart you will have whatever you say. So what that explains to you is that every time we operate Bible faith, we come into contact with the spirit realm, either to alter what the enemy is doing or to process that which God has already released. This is a very important statement. So number four, revelation will bring you into contact with the spirit realm. Revelation will bring you into contact with the spirit realm. Deuteronomy 29, 29, the secret belongs to God, but what God reveals belongs to us. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 11 said, What eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard, what has not entered the heart of man, as the Lord prepared for them that loved him. So by revelation, we access the realm of the spirit. We come into contact with all the reality that is established in that realm. Number five, the call and the gift of God will bring you into contact with the spirit realm. When a man has the call of God and he operates the gift of God, he will frequently relate with the realm of the spirit. Through the call of God, you relate with the realm of the spirit. And through the giftings of the spirit, you also relate with the realm. For example, if you are operating in word of wisdom, if you are operating in word of knowledge, designing of the spirit, through this you can relate with the realm of the You can see somebody who looks like a real human being and the God can give you access that it is an animal. There are people when I was in campus several years ago, I used to sit down at the back and I would see some fine, fine girls that they are walking into the, into the lecture room with their head down and their leg up. Some of them would carry stick and then I would start challenging them. One day one of them said, is there everything you see you must say? I have access to that realm by revelation, by the gift called the designing of the spirit. So every gift of the spirit helps you to relate with the realm of the spirit. The reason why God gives us the Holy Ghost and the gift of the spirit is that through the effectual using of this gift, we can relate with the realm of the spirit. So anyone who has the call of God and anyone who has the gift of God we always come into contact with the spirit realm. Number six is laying of hands. 
laying of hands. The Bible says, stir up the gift that is in you, which was given to you through the laying of hands of the presbytery. Laying of hands. When a hand is laid upon you, it is a transference of reality from one spirit to another. When 70 elders appear before Moses, God took from the spirit of Moses and he put it on the elders. So laying of hand has a serious implication and it has a serious consequences. In fact, the Bible said lay hands on no man so that you don't partake of their sin. Because what laying of hands does is to transfer the streams of life of a man into another one. So laying of hands, transference of the spirit, will always bring you into contact with the spirit. We could see that in different examples in the Bible. The Bible said, and Jesus gave them authority to cast out power of darkness, and the 70 returned in joy. He shared his spirit with them. And because he shared the spirit with them, they did exactly what Jesus did. So laying of hands will always bring you into contact with the spirit realm. The most unfortunate thing is that if you, if a wrong hand is laid upon you, wrong experiences will come into your life. Laying of hands, it is a lega, it's a biblical lega means that opens the spirit of a man for transference experience. The seventh one is what we call meditation. Meditation and prayer. Meditation, prayer, and fasting can bring you into contact with the spirit realm. Meditation, prayer, and fasting can bring you into contact with the spirit realm. Every time you are meditating, meditation will always give you access to possess the thought of God and to possess the mind of God. Prayer will bring you into contact with the realm of the spirit. The Bible says, He that prayed in an unknown tongue speaketh mystery that requires interpretation. So when you are praying in an unknown tongue, you are speaking mystery. Mystery does not live in the realms of human logical mind. Mystery functions in the realms of God. Mysteries are the truths that exist before God but has not been accessed by man. So by the time you begin to pray in the spirit, you begin to pray in the spirit and the privilege of accessing the mysteries of God and then receiving the divine things is there. Meditation, prayer, and fasting will bring you into contact with the spirit realm. Very important. Number eight, covenant. Covenant. Covenant brings you into contact with the realm of the spirit. If it is a divine covenant, it will bring you to the realm of God. If it is demonic covenant, it will bring you to the realm of Satan. Covenant is so powerful that it will always bring you into contact with the realm of the spirit. Covenant is powerful. That is why the Bible says, Have respect unto the covenant, for the habitation of the word is full of cruelty. Number nine is what I call the invasion of the glory realms. That is exactly what happens to Peter, James, and John at the mountain of transfiguration. I need to explain in details what we call the glory realm. There is a realm which the Bible refers to as glory realm. That glory realm was the realm that invaded the mountain of transfiguration where Peter, John, and James were with Jesus Christ. And the Bible says in that realm, Jesus transfigured. Jesus transfigured. And there his face did shine. His hair was as white as wool. And then there appeared unto him Elijah and Moses. You see, in the realm, in the glory realm, there are appearances. There are radiance. The radiance of God is there. The appearance of God becomes definite. It becomes tangible. In the theology, we call it theophany. That is, God's visible expression will eventually invade an environment 
and superimpose its authority and nature in that place. The glory realm is a powerful realm and it's a realm where uh, the things of God dominate an environment. The things of God dominate an environment. The things of God dominate an, uh, an environment. The things of God dominate an environment. And when the things of God dominate an environment, it conditions that environment to behave exactly like it has been programmed. So you need to understand this. These nine things brings you into contact with the realm of the spirit. Number one, what brings you to the realm of the spirit? What brings you contact? Your spirit man. If you are born of God, you will always come into contact with the realm of the spirit. Anointing will bring you into the contact with the realm of the spirit because the highest expressions of God's power is the anointed. Anointing will give you a role to play in the realm of the spirit. If you are not anointed, you won't play a role in the life of people and you will not play a major role in the realm of the spirit. Anointing gives you access to the spirit of a man to produce insight, minister to a person until the change comes into that person. I have also said when you are teaching the word of God and your word contains light, the light of the word of God you preach, it will be immortalized into the spirit of your audience. That is when you can drive persuasion, conviction, and change. In the absence of the anointing, you cannot impose the word of God to create a change in the life of the people that had you. So, faith brings you into contact with the realm of God. Number four is revelation. We bring you contact into the realm of God. I told you the realm where God lives is a complex realm. Revelation simplifies the complexity of God. If without revelation, we can't understand God because the way of God is not logical. The way of God is revelation. Number five is the call and the gift of God will bring you into contact with the realm of the spirit. Number six is laying of hands. Transference of spirit reality transference of spirit will bring you into contact with the realm of the spirit meditation prayer and fasting will bring you into contact with the realm of the spirit covenant brings you into contact with the realm of god if it is an evil covenant it will bring you into the realm of darkness until covenant is broken some people cannot be free from the consequences that proceed from the realm of darkness so the in the, the last one is what i now call the invasion of the glory realms the realm where God lives is called glory realms. What is the glory realm? It is the realm where the complexity of God is displayed. Everything you see on the heart is the simplicity of God. When you come into the habitation of God in the spirit, you will know that there are complexity. There are angels that when you see them a week, you won't get yourself well. The Bible says when John saw him in his complexity, he fell like a dead man and he stretched forth his right down towards him and he said, fear not because I am the one who was, who is and who is to come. Even though John spent some years with him on the earth, he couldn't figure him out when John has access into the glory realm. When he saw Jesus in the full glory, he collapsed. The same thing happens to Daniel. When Daniel saw the angels, he collapsed. When you, see, when you have been taken to heaven, and you see the realm. There was a time I, I, I collapsed as well. You will collapse. You will collapse because the glory realm is the realm of God's complexity. It is the realm of divine complexity. Things must be interpreted. Things must be explained to you. Because that realm, there are angels who has eyes full within and without. Angels that have six wings. Two to fly. Two covers their face. And then two protect their feet. I'm talking about cherubim. Cherubim angels that protect the radiance of God in the throne. This is what the Bible says. The angels called cherub, they are the one of the strongest beings in heaven. They surround the throne of God so that the radiance of the glory of God can be contained by them. The seraphim are the angels that they are angels of fire. They are the announcer of the glory of God. Before the glory of God manifests, they firstly announce it. It's in the book of Isaiah chapter 6. The seraph are the one that announce the glory, while the cherub are the one that protect the glory. One of the cherub 
angel is called the devil. The devil was an anointed cherub. It was a covering angel. What does that mean? They are angels who cover the throne of God. They preserve and protect the holiness of the Father. So you must understand that when that glory realm comes, when there is an invasion of that realm, on the earth there are divers of miracles there are healings there are pros in fact the bible says in the time of solomon for the priest could not minister for the glory of god has come one of the things that happen when the glory of god invade a place is that you don't need anybody to conduct spirituality spirituality will conduct itself a preacher is not needed when there is an invasion of glory from the preacher to the pulpit from the pulpit to the pew from the least to the great they we all know god there is something the glory of God does. It is called kabod. It's called dogza. That simply means it is the weight of God. What is the glory of God? The substance of God's reality. What is the glory of God? God's glory is his essence. What is the meaning of essence? It is the notable quality of a being. And one of the notable quality of God as a being is the glory. The glory describes him. It is the splendor of God. It is the majesty of God. It is the radiance of God, the brightness of God. That is what the glory is. It is the weight of his presence, the riches of his goodness. That is the glory. And that glory commands two manifestations. Under the glory of God, we can be still or we can be steered. When we are still, it's like we are freed in the presence of God. When we are still, there are manifestations. The Bible says, be still and know that I'm God. So the glory of God produces stillness and it causes staring. Staring simply means everything within you begin to bubble and reflect to the demand of that glory. So the invasion of the glory realms will bring you into contact with the realm of the spirit. When you stay with God enough, you will put on the radiance of God. As we behold him with an unveiled face, we are transformed into the same image from glory to glory, even by the Spirit of God. I'm praying for someone here today that the glory of God will invade your life. The glory of God is the display of the holiness of God. I, I have defined worship as our response to the revelation of God's holiness. Every time we respond to the holiness of God, then that is worship. Worship is so powerful that when you break into the realm of the holiness of God, your tongue will change. There are so many songs we are singing here that they are radical songs. They are rascal. They don't meet up to the standard of God's holiness. But when you have an access into the realm of God, just like Isaiah did in the year King Uzziah died, Isaiah saw the Lord. When Isaiah saw the Lord, his message changed. Many people's message will change only after they come into contact with the realm of God's glory. And um, what so, a lot of things people are saying today that does not correspond to the reality of the glory of God. I pray the Lord is going to touch you just as he did for Isaiah. He touched his tongue and he said, now you are pure. Now you are purified. Now you are cleansed. It was the tongue that perverted Isaiah. It was the tongue that perverted him. And God has to deal with unholy tongue so that he can be able to preach exactly what the Lord has put in his mouth. Now listen to this very important. There are four basic truths I want to share with you when you are in touch or connected to the realms of God. Every time a man, a believer has the privilege of relating with the realms of God, the first important thing that will happen, awareness and reference. Awareness and reference. Jacob said, so God was here, but I never knew. God was here, but I never knew. So awareness and reference is the first response of people that come into contact with the realms of God. Anointed uh, um, awareness and reference. I've seen, I've come into contact with angelic realms so many times. Uh, when I was at the age six years old, the angels carried me into, carried me every night for 10 years. From the age of six to the age of 16. Every night the angels would come to my house and carried me. When I became born again, I stopped seeing the angel. And I asked the Lord, I said, why didn't I see the angels again? He said, "Those angel, that angel you saw for 10 years, it is the angels of my mercy. I sent the angel to preserve you until grace find you. That day I understand the difference between mercy and grace. 
Then God told me, he said, by mercy, I come to your level. By grace, you come to my level. So by grace, we come to the level of Christ. By mercy, God comes to our level. God comes to the level of humanity by mercy. We are sent to the realms of God by grace. That is why you must understand the Bible says, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find help in time of need. I'm teaching scriptures as regards this subject. So when you come into contact with the realm of God, the first thing that happens is awareness and reference. So God was here, but I never knew. God was here, but I never knew. The second thing that you will do is that when you come, when your spirit comes into contact with the realms of God, you will be open to instructions, interpretations, and direction. In 1997, when God put a mantle of writing upon me, he put a mantle of writing upon me. I was in my room in school. And all of a sudden, I had a revelation of an old man that his hair was as white as cloud. He came in, and then he, he, he sat down, and then he was writing something on the board. And I saw myself, I was copying what he was writing. And he told me in 97, he said, this is your mantle. Every time you write, I will be committed to your writing and bring you revelation. So what that happens, so he said, as you are writing it, you are writing it in the tablet of your spirit, you will never forget it. And up till today, the writing is that I have board in my, in, in where I stand now, I have two board here. Every time the angels keep writing for me, some of the time I will sleep and they will write on the walls. They will write teachings on the wall. They will write it on the ceiling. They will write it in front of me. I will read, 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 read. And when I wake up, I will not forget. That experience has been with me from 1997 till date. There was a time we were in the school that I was, we were doing an exam. An angel began to write on the board answers for me. And that is the mantle. That day I understand that mantle is not just the Agbada people wear. He said, this is the instrument of your revelation. A mantle is the instrument of your revelation. Write it down. A mantle is the instrument of your revelation. And that is why it is not good to copy people. You must find your expression in God. So when, I, when you come into contact with the realms of God, awareness and reference, instructions interpretation and direction is the second thing the number three god's prophetic agenda is unveiled the prophetic agenda of god is unveiled when a man comes into contact into god's realm the agenda of god opens up for him he is no more ignorant of the reality why because the voice of god is majestic the voice of god breaks the cedar the voice of god divides the flames of fire the voice of God breaks the cedar of Lebanon. When you come into the realms of God, the voice of God becomes distinct and clear. You are no longer under the spirit of presumption. You walk, you are attentive to accuracy. That is the importance of the prophet, the importance of coming into contact with God. I'm praying for you today. You will come into contact with the realm of God. Number four, you are equipped with the energy of God. Anyone that comes into the realms of God will contact the energy of God. The word energy of God means energia. Energia. When you come into contact with the realm of God, you will possess the energy of God. The energy of God is called the spirit of might. That is why Isaiah chapter 40 says, As thou not know, as thou not had, the everlasting Lord, the God, the creators of the heavens and the earth, neither faint nor weary, there is no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the weak. To those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint, and the young man shall be utterly weary. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. There is a dimension of energy 
that God infuses into your spirit when you come into encounter with him. The Bible says it will do exceedingly, abundantly, above what you ever ask or think, according to the power that works in you. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. So when the Spirit of God infuses strength on you, you come up with the energy of God. Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. He didn't die. Somebody has not fasted for half a day. He almost collapsed. You need the energy of God. But the only way through the energy of God can be infused into you is that your spirit must come up into the realms of God. Number four is what we call encounter. Encounter. And then you begin to grow in the wisdom of God when you come into the realms of God. When the Bible says you become a man of stature, what is a stature in the Bible? Stature is the growth you attain by revelation, obedience, and faith. Stature is the growth you attain in the realm of God by revelation, obedience, and faith. So the realm of God is a vertical realm. It's an ascending and descending realm. I've, make, I've explained that. That when Joseph had a dream and he saw a ladder and he saw angel ascending, descending. Angel ascending, descending. He woke up. He said, so God was here. But I never knew. Jesus repeated the same thing. The full version of that dream. He said unto Nathaniel, You have not seen anything. You will see angel ascending and descending on the Son of Man. What does that mean? It simply means that the ministering of angels, when they ascend, they take our worship to God. When they descend, they bring the glory of God. And that is the function of the angel. They take our worship to God. And then they bring down the glory. So when God inhales my worship, he exhales his glory. The glory of God is always in response to acceptable worship. Praise God. Alright, so the realm of God is vertical and ascending and descending. Let me show you something in Revelation chapter 4. I want to show you something and then I'll be rounding up. I think... Oh, I've exceeded one hour. Let me just m mention one or two things. I, can't I cannot teach. If I'm going to teach on understanding the realms of God, it can take about five months, but I'm just paraphrasing what I'm teaching. Um, Revelation chapter 4 verse 1. After this, I look and behold. Looking and behold is not the same thing. To behold simply means to, to see something through the eyes of the Spirit. So after this I look and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was at his word of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show you things which must be hereafter. And immediately, immediately I was in the spirit. I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one that sat on the throne. So what he's saying is that he said, Come up, and I will show you things. Now in the natural realm, when you want to go through a door, you don't come up to go through a door. You just walk through a door in the physical realm. But in the realm of God, you have to ascend to go through a door. So Paul the Apostle says the same thing in Galatians chapter 1. He said, I went up by revelation. I went up by revelation. So one of the ways through which you go up is by praying in tongues. When you pray in tongues, you will go up. What praying in tongues does to your spirit, it infuses ability of God through which you ascend up. Remember the Bible says in Psalm 24 verse 1, I will, who we ascend into the hill of God and we dwell in his holy hill. He that has a clean hand and a pure hand. So ascending, it is a means of entering into the door in the spirit. If you don't ascend, you cannot enter. So accent simply means you must be above the natural sequence of order. You must be above a natural life. You must be above the flesh. You must walk in the spirit. Because you can never accent until you walk in the spirit. It's a walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So the way through which we accent to the realm of God is by walking. To walk in the spirit, what does it mean? To explore the possibility of the spirit until you attain truth. That is what it means. 
So this scripture is very, very important for everyone who I, I, I don't have much time to explain that. But listen to this very important. The realm of God is vertical, ascending and descending realm. Jesus ascended in the midst of angels and then he was received by the cloud. All right. So um, Elijah was taken by the wire wind and he went up. Uh, you must understand that. But for Moses and Elijah in Matthew 17, they descended. So I told you that the nature of the realms of God can come as an invitation or an invasion. If God summoned you to appear in his throne, that is an invitation. That was what John experienced. John experienced the invitation of God. But Matthew, but Peter, James, and John experienced the invasion of God. So in your Christian life, you will experience both the invasion of God and the invitation of God. God can summon you. A summon is a cry that gains attention. So the realm of God is vertical and is ascending and descending realm in operation. So Jacob saw angel ascend and descend on a, on what? On a ladder. The ladder is a typology of Christ. That is, through Christ, the activities of angels will increase on the earth. That is what he said to Nathaniel. He said, you will soon see angel ascending and descending on the Son of Man. That is, the Son of Man, who happens to be Christ, will be the reason for the increase in the activities of angels in this end time. Before Jesus came, the activities of angels were limited. One came in a season to stir up the water, and then the steering of the water will only cover for one person. Any other person that jumps here will get wet, but will not get healed. But now there is a provision for all the born-again children of God to jump into the rivers of life so that we can be made whole. This is very important for those who are watching now. The Word of God, the gift of God, the Word of God, the Word of God will always play a major role in bringing your spirit realm into contact. If you are careless with what you speak, if you are careless with word, you are careless with thoughts, and you are careless with action, you will always be a victim of the law that controls the spirit realm. Because the realm of God is a realm of legality. When you hear something like whatever you bind on the earth shall be bound in the heaven, then you must do the initiation on the earth. You must initiate a change before the heavens take it up. You must speak here before it is changed there. When you speak here, it will change there. When you speak here, things will happen there. So you must not be careless with your word because through the word, we transact the reality in the realm of the spirit. It is the word that transports reality in the realm of the spirit. Your word can weaken angels and then your word can strengthen them because the word of God in your mouth is an instrument in the realm of the spirit. Then the word of God is also a means of a witness. The word of God is a witness in the realm of the spirit. Out of the mouth of two or three people, every truth is established. Two or three witnesses. May God make you a witness. A witness of the things to come. A witness of the things to come. So you must understand that the realm of the spirit is a legal realm where you relate based on God's principle, God's providence, and God's presence. This is a very important statement. I don't know whether you catch up what I'm saying. The realm of the spirit is a legal realm where you relate based on the principle of God, the providence of God, and the presence of God. You relate. The legality in the realm of God is only secure by responding to the principles of God. When the Bible says, Give it shall be given, pressed down, shaking together, and running over, shall men give. Some people are fighting giving. It is the eternal principle of God. So the devil is doing a lot of havoc in the body of Christ today so that every principle that established the legality of the authority of God in the realm of the spirit, he wants people to alter that principles so that it can, have, it can make them a lawful captive. It will not be a lawful captive in the name of Jesus. So you need to understand the realm of, the, of God, <clears throat> the reason why the Holy Spirit was sent to live within us. The reason why the Holy Spirit was sent to live within us is that it can guide us into all truth. The word truth there means reality. It can guide us into all reality. You know that the ultimate result of your interaction with God in the realm of God is to produce a life that is patterned after God. 
Why do we pray? Why do we relate with God in His realm? The reason why I relate with God in His realm is that my relationship with God will produce a life in me that is patterned after God. That is why if some things are happening in your life, Satan is always there to alter your decision. Every time you are thinking, you are relating with spirit entity. It is very important. So the realm of God is a realm of angel and immortal being. And uh, I don't, I'm not teaching today. Let me stop this teaching. I hope somebody is blessed. Next time, I'm still going in 30 days teaching. I uh, will begin to unfold the revelation of the angels within the Bible. Meanwhile, take note, everything I'm teaching is Bible proof and Bible faith. I'm not teaching extra biblical activities. I'm not teaching extra curricular activities. I don't believe in that. I base my teaching on the scripture. And then I find my interpretation from the word of God. The Bible says that uh, let everyone that speaks, speaks as the oracles of God. It says, the, it says that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. But holy men of God were moved. Holy men of God speak as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. And I pray if you are blessed, say amen. Somebody say amen. All right. If you have been blessed today, just say, Reverend, honestly, you have blessed me. You've blessed me. Hallelujah. If you have been blessed, let me know. And then if you have a question, you can also let me know. Tomorrow I'm going to come your way. Uh, again, God gave me a mandate, 30 days, non-stop teaching. And tomorrow I'm going to do the part two of what we call understanding the call of God. Understanding the call of God, part two. I did part one last week. You can check the Facebook and then you listen to it again to refresh yourself. Tomorrow I will be coming with the part two and my teaching for every Tuesday is two hours teaching. It's two hours teaching. My teaching every Tuesday is a, it's an apostolic global Bible study. That's what I do. And so I will be teaching on understanding the call of God part 2 alright so let's do this together within 30 days and if you pay attention to different subjects I'll be bringing I am telling you it will drive the reality of God into your consciousness and it will change some things in your life glory be to God are you left to sow a seed do you want to partner with Reverend Paul God is calling me to nation this year is calling me to UK to South Africa to Mexico and America. I'm trusting God for support, financial support, so that we can put things together. And I'm also trusting God for those who can help me transcribe my teaching into books so that I can have e-books on Amazon. I want as many people can help me transcribe and then so that they can take up the teaching and then we can make the Word of God available to our generation. This is the time and now is the time. God bless you. So if you are led to sow a seed, you can chat me up. And then I will give you uh, the PayPal or other, uh, other accounts. This is going to go a long way. When you s support me to do this, uh, you are encouraging me to do more. You are encouraging me to do more. I have devoted my life into research of the truth of the scripture and especially subject that has to do with the spirit subject which the Lord has helped me over the years to establish that concept and I would like you to support me I am asking you you also give towards this ministry and the Lord will bless you Father thank you for the word we've received I pray beyond what I have said beyond what I've explained beyond what I've interpreted let the Holy Spirit drive the truth deeper into their consciousness to produce a change and persuasion of life. I ask that you will grow up in the grace of God and you will be established in the truth that you have received today. And everybody shout a louder Amen. Amen. Thank you everyone. Thank you uh, Pastor Ezekiah for your highlights. Uh, I will read some of them so that I can also be refreshed I'm blessed. I'll be signing off today and until then I'll come your way again 2 p.m. Ontario time, 8 p.m. Nigerian time. God bless you.